join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. The story of science is often told as a tale of laboratories in Europe, of white-coated men who mixed chemicals under the glow of gas lamps, and of corporations that later sold the fruits of those discoveries to the world. Yet buried beneath the dominant narrative are names that rarely make the textbooks, figures whose work not only pushed human knowledge forward but also shaped everyday life in ways that most people never stop to think about. Among these overlooked figures stand a man whose ingenuity touched millions every time they washed their hands, bathed their children, or smoothed lotion across their skin. This is the story of George Washington Carver, the black chemist who transformed not just agriculture, but the very science of soap and skincare, forever changing how we understand the chemistry of everyday life. To appreciate the weight of Carver's contributions, one must first understand the world he was born into. He came into life around 1864, at the tail end of the Civil War, in Diamond, Missouri, as an enslaved child of Mary Carver. His father had died in an accident before his birth, and his mother vanished, presumed kidnapped by raiders. Left orphaned, frail, and weak from birth, George was raised by his white guardians, Moses and Susan Carver, who provided him with shelter but little else beyond survival. At a time when African Americans were denied education, Carver's thirst for knowledge was extraordinary. He would walk miles just to sit in a one-room schoolhouse, often bringing with him not just books but also wild plants, roots, and herbs he had gathered. From his earliest days, he was fascinated by the natural world, not just as beauty, but as a set of secrets waiting to be unlocked for human benefit. While Carver is most famously remembered for his agricultural innovations with peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soil restoration, his chemical experiments with oils, fats, and natural plant compounds led him to unexpected and groundbreaking discoveries in personal care. So, that humble yet essential object had existed for centuries, but in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was still harsh, crude, and often damaging to the skin. Many soaps were lie heavy, made by mixing animal fats with caustic soda, and while they cleaned, they left the skin dry, cracked, and irritated. For African Americans in particular, whose skin was more prone to dryness and sensitivity due to both climate and genetic factors, such soaps were often unsuitable. Into this problem stepped Carver, not with vast corporate resources, but with his quiet brilliance and a laboratory that often had to function with reused bottles, makeshift burners, and secondhand equipment. Carver's work with plant oils became the basis for what we now recognize as the foundation of modern skincare chemistry. From peanuts, he extracted a light, non-greasy oil that could be used not only in cooking, but also in emollients and moisturizers. From sweet potatoes, he derived starches and compounds that could be transformed into powders, creams, and even synthetic rubber. His relentless experimentation revealed that nature's bounty could be harnessed to create gentle soaps that not only clean but also nourish the skin. He produced lotions that healed cracked hands, ointments that soothed irritation, and balms that protected against the wind and sun. Though much of this work was carried out in the modest laboratory at Tuskegee Institute, its impact was enormous, particularly for black communities who, for the first time, began to see personal care products formulated with their needs in mind. It is important to place Carver's skincare innovations in the broader context of racial history. In the early 1900s, the beauty industry was beginning to expand, but it was overwhelmingly designed for white consumers. The products on the market rarely took into account the differences in black hair texture, skin sensitivity, or pigmentation. Black chemists and entrepreneurs were virtually shut out of the mainstream industry, which was dominated by white-owned corporations. Yet within segregated communities, a parallel industry was emerging, led by pioneers such as Madam C.J. Walker, Annie Turnbull Malone, and others who developed hair care systems and beauty products tailored to black women. Carver, though not directly involved in the commercial beauty trade, provided the scientific groundwork that helped normalize the use of plant-derived oils and natural compounds in these products. His soaps and skin lotions were used in Tuskegee, distributed in local communities, and inspired black entrepreneurs to think beyond imitation of white formulas toward unique products rooted in African-American experience and natural chemistry. 
One of Carver's lesser-known experiments involved the use of peanut oil in the treatment of skin diseases. He noted that the oil, when refined and blended with natural waxes, had soothing and protective qualities. Decades later, dermatological science would validate many of these observations, recognizing the importance of plant-based oils like peanut, shea, and cocoa in providing essential fatty acids that restore the skin barrier. Carver's early formulations were rudimentary, but they hinted at what would eventually become a billion-dollar industry, natural plant-based skincare. In fact, much of the current green beauty movement, which emphasizes botanical ingredients and sustainability, follows a path that Carver first blazed over a century ago. Carver's work was not only scientific but deeply philosophical. He believed that every creation of God had a purpose and that nothing in nature was wasted. This ethos drove him to look at plants like peanuts and sweet potatoes, crops often dismissed as lowly or insignificant, and unlocked from them dozens of potential uses, from paints and plastics to food and medicine. Soap and skincare, in his view, were not luxuries but essentials tied to health, dignity, and self-respect. In an America where African Americans were often denied even the basic human recognition of cleanliness, appearance, and self-care, his innovations carried a moral weight. They offered not just physical relief but also a sense of empowerment and pride. His influence extended far beyond Tuskegee. In the 1920s and 1930s, as Carver's fame grew, he was invited to consult with industry leaders, farmers, and even presidents. Henry Ford sought his advice on plant-based industrial products, and President Theodore Roosevelt praised his genius. Yet Carver remained humble, refusing to patent many of his discoveries because he believed knowledge should be free and serve the common good. This decision meant that while corporations eventually profited enormously from innovations like plant-based oils and skincare, Carver himself remained poor. Still, he considered his work a success not by financial standards, but by its impact on everyday life. Every family that benefited from softer soap, every child whose skin healed from a gentle lotion, and every person who found dignity in self-care carried a piece of his legacy. The tragedy of Carver's story is that, despite his revolutionary work, his name is still too often reduced to the peanut man, a simplification that erases the breadth of his genius. While it is true that he developed over 300 uses for the peanut, including peanut oil, peanut butter, and peanut-based cosmetics, his role in the broader chemical sciences remains underappreciated. He laid the groundwork for what we now call cosmetic chemistry, and his early plant-based skincare products anticipated entire industries that would flourish decades after his death. In today's world, where multinational corporations sell moisturizers infused with natural oils, where plant-based ingredients are marketed as cutting edge, and where inclusive skincare for diverse populations is a growing priority, Carver's fingerprints can be found everywhere. Remembering Carver as a revolutionary chemist in the field of soap and skincare is not merely about honoring one man. It is about rewriting the history of science to include those voices who were excluded from its mainstream narrative. It is about recognizing that the comforts of modern life, clean hands, smooth skin, gentle lotions, were shaped not just by European laboratories, but also by the curiosity of a black man born into slavery who saw in the humblest plants the secrets of healing and care. His life reminds us that science, at its best, is not about patents or profits, but about service dignity, and the improvement of human life. When George Washington Carver died in 1943, tributes poured in from around the world. President Franklin D. Roosevelt dedicated a national monument in his honor, the first ever to an African American. Schools were named after him, and his portrait was placed on postage stamps. Yet the full depth of his contribution to agriculture, to chemistry, and yes, to the simple act of washing with gentle soap, remains to be fully appreciated. To tell his story is to restore to history a man whose genius shaped everyday rituals of cleanliness and care, a man who took what was ordinary and revealed its extraordinary potential. In every bar of soap that lathers softly, in every lotion that soothes dry skin, in every cream that nourishes rather than burns, the legacy of Carver lives on. His chemistry was not only science but also compassion a gift from a man who rose from slavery to change the very chemistry of human life. 
To remember him fully is to recognize that black genius was not an exception, but a foundation, one that continues to cleanse, heal, and inspire the world.